بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر Par excellence presents ولا اله الا الله Lessons from the stories of the prophets by Mufti Ismail ibn Musa Mank. Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam, part three. Abraham, peace be upon him, and Ismail, peace be upon him, part three. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless him and all his companions and to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness Beloved brothers and sisters, once again we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us the sacrifice and thinking about it, it's just a one, one and a half hour sacrifice maximum with the transport coming and going a three hour sacrifice. And that is just for a month if we are to do it on a regular basis. It is nowhere near the sacrifices of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we still ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never to let us be entrapped by shaitan where everyone else is engaged in his obedience and we are doing something else. May Allah never allow that to happen to us. We spoke about how Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam had left Egypt and returned to Palestine. We spoke about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in many ways. He had granted him sustenance. He had granted him livestock. He had granted him so much. He worked very hard in terms of business. And he had collected whatever he had together with the da'wah he was engaged in. And when he found that people became jealous of him, he returned to Palestine, to Asham. There he lived for many years, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided not to bless him with offspring. He had no children. Until many years later, when his wife Sarah, may peace be upon her, felt for him being such a good man who always made dua, that Ya Allah grant me offspring who will be pure, who will serve your cause, offspring who will surrender to you just like I have. Offspring who will surrender to you just like I have. Remember this dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was very powerful. And he meant it. He did not just make a dua without actually meaning it. So his wife decided to give him the servant that she had had in marriage. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided then to bless Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam with a child. After many years, it is reported he was 86 years old when he was blessed with Ismail alayhi salam. Now he never lost hope and he knew that there is nothing to lose hope for. In a verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam says, Man who can ever lose hope in their own maker besides those who are totally astray? So we can never lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we shouldn't. So after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a child, he was instructed after some time to take this wife of his and the child, meaning mother and child, and to move on the earth. Now there are several narrations making mention of what exactly happened and why he left. However, let's bear in mind that almost all of them have come to us from the people of the book. And the people of the book, remember, because the Jews and the Christians are following messengers who are messengers of Islam, yes, indeed. 
at some stage they, they they had been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but because they rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they try their best to show that his lineage was not that grand astaghfirullah may Allah safeguard us so for this reason they start making mention of how the mother was hated and the child and so on and Sarah may peace be upon her was fed up and tired of them and she told Ibrahim alayhi salam to take them and to go away that we believe is an Israeli riwayah which means it has come to us from the people of the book with us we firmly believe it was the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take the child to take the mother and to continue until he got to a certain place which was completely barren it had nothing on it it was just soil and it was a very very hot place and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it and that is the valley of Makkah when he got to Makkah to Mukarramah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala issued another instruction subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him leave this woman and the child and go go in order to worship us we'd like you to leave Ibrahim alayhi salam was the one who surrenders we all know that he was a Muslim he always said wa ana awwalul muslimin I want to be the first to surrender remember the term Muslim one who surrenders to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if you surrender you are a Muslim so Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam decided to leave his wife and his child and they hardly had much to eat it is reported just a day or two of food and drink and he started walking and his wife looks at him and she starts questioning him where are you going what's happening he didn't answer he just carried on then she decided there's only one thing that can be happening here it can only be an instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so she says Allahu amaraka bihada. is it Allah who has instructed you to do this that is when he said yes and he continued at that moment she also surrendered and she decided not to question further and she knew for a fact that Allah was going to look after them now as he left he began to make dua asking Allah ya Allah I left for your sake you instructed me you told me to do things remember one thing my beloved brothers and sisters the instructions that were given to Ibrahim alayhi salam a lot of them to him at that point the only thing that mattered was the source where it came from whether it made sense or not was not up to him meaning he did not bother if it didn't make sense it made sense that was another issue the fact that it came from the source itself from Allah that was enough for him to surrender this is the quality of Ibrahim alayhi salam and this is what resulted in him being known later on Allah says Allah has taken Ibrahim as a very close friend a Khalil is a friend he became a friend of Allah because no matter what Allah said even if it did not make sense to him he surrendered to it because he knew where it came from with us we have instructions they make sense to us we know this is a prohibition we know this is a command we still find ourselves questioning why this why that and so on whereas when the instruction comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should also be from those who surrender so as he went he says Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyyati biwadin ghayri dhi zar'in inda baytika al-muharram O oh Allah, I have left there behind some of my family in that valley close to the sacred home. Now it is reported that the sacred house, when was it built? He is either speaking about something that was going to be built or he is speaking about something that used to be there a long, long time ago because some narrations say that it was built firstly by Adam alayhi salatu was salam but we have no confirmed evidence in that regard what we do know it was built by Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail alayhi salam whether it was there and destroyed later on by the floods what not only Allah knows however he is making mention of something Allah had instructed him to go and leave them there so he is using the same words to describe the place so he says Rabbana liyuqimu salah O Allah 
I have left them there in order to go and fulfill an act of worship for your sake, the salah. I'm going to fulfill prayers for you or in order to go out and call you, to call out to you. Allah had given him a time and a place and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him to leave. So he left and he continued. Then what did he say? He says, فَجَعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ تَهُوِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَارْزُقُهُمْ مِّنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ He says, therefore, O oh Allah, let the hearts of the people incline towards that valley. Let the hearts of the people incline towards that place and grant them produce in abundance so that they may be thankful. At that time, there was still no one there. Nothing had happened there. And I want to take it all the way to this day and age. As we are speaking, if we think, mashallah, this masjid has a few thousand people in it and it's choking. Do you know that right now at that spot where the mother and child were left, my heart and your heart is also there. Do you agree? Subhanallah. That's the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And there, even if we used the colloquial term, chokka block, wallahi, it is not enough to describe how choking it may be there. Allahu Akbar, how full it is. And as we know, they are extending and extending and extending and no matter how much they extend, it will never be enough. Subhanallah. This is a dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When Allah gives, He grants it completely. He said, Oh Allah, let the hearts of the people incline towards that place. Can anyone say, Our heart does not incline to Mecca? If we had it our way, we would all be there right now. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us there again and again. Then He says, Oh Allah, grant them produce. From the very beginning, the produce in Mecca is amazing. It comes from all over. And it is there and people eat and people drink and people share and people uh, from different parts of the globe bring different produce and they buy and they sell. You want the best bananas and apples to this day, you will get the best of them there in Makkah al Mukarramah. It's a dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Anyway, as he made a dua, he continues. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention now, obviously in the history, we find the story of what happened there with Ismail alayhi salatu was A little baby. He was breastfed for a while and then the food ran out and everything dried up, subhanallah. And the mother is looking at the child and she says, no, I must make an effort to try and look for some food. So she decided to go up the hillock, the Mount Safa. She went up the mountain and she's looking. Is there any sign? No sign. No life. No movement. No nothing. So she came down, making dua to Allah. And when she gets to the bottom, she's running. Why is she running at the bottom? Because she wants to get to the top of the other mount on the other side. And she doesn't want to miss anyone who might pass while she's at the bottom. So she runs at a specific place and then she climbs up. She is in Marwa. She makes dua again for sustenance. Ya Allah, send us some goodness. Ya Allah, you are the one. We know you will not let us down. And a couple of times she ran up and down. And down and up. Allahu Akbar. Making dua, looking, checking. Then she heard a sound. And she's looking. What sound is this? And she came down and she looked at where the child was. And there was a spring of water gushing from nowhere. Subhanallah. A spring of water gushing from nowhere. She looked at it and she thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She sat down and she wanted to gather the water. So she created a basin-like structure. Small little basin-like structure with her hands, with the muddy sand clay that now became like clay and mud because it was wet and she began to say in the language zam 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 it means stop 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 because we want to now take you and drink you so you stop to this day we have this water known as zam zam from the same well and for your information it is gushing at this moment it is gushing at this moment thousands of gallons per hour 
And millions of people across the globe drink from it. Every single one of us know exactly what we are talking about. And for your information, there is only one historic narration as to the history of that well. There's no dispute about it. Nothing. Nobody has ever come up with another version regarding the well of Zamzam. So that is confirmed evidence according to history that it is a well of Zamzam from that particular time of Hajar and Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. Amazing. Now from this we learn that in life, some of us, Allah has kept us on a level slightly lower. Never lose hope in Allah. Make dua that Allah grant you sustenance that will be good for you. Sustenance that will be enough for you. But together with that, there is no point in just making a dua and sitting at home relaxing, thinking the ceiling is going to crack and gold is going to start falling. If anything, you'll hear a rat in the ceiling. Allahu Akbar. Yes, we need to learn from this that an effort is required. And you need to make that effort. Hajar alayha salatu wasalam, do you know what she did? She climbed up and she hunted. She made dua. She went down. She went back there. She made dua. When we go for hajj, we are to repeat this in order to appreciate the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. So that is the story of Zamzam. And this is one of the most interesting stories of the water that, that has gushed from that particular place. The story of Zamzam, it still continues. After some time, the birds began to come. When the birds began to come and they were drinking from there in the middle of the desert, the middle of the desert, no life was there. And caravans used to pass and you know in the heat of the moment they're looking for birds. Why are they looking for birds? Not to hunt the birds but wherever you see a bird you know there's some water nearby. So the clan of Jorhum was passing from that area and they noticed some birds in the middle of nowhere. They were not expecting them. So they decided to check up on what is happening and they sent someone. Go and see where these birds are flying to. So the birds had gone and they were sitting around this well and the water was gushing they were drinking and this messenger finds a woman with a little baby so he went back to his people the people of Jorhum the caravan and he explained to them they were very very amazed they came they knew this is a miracle so they asked the woman do you mind if we live here why because there's water running from here it's gushing that doesn't happen in the in, the, in, in that particular desert it doesn't happen water gushing from underneath so when they asked her the question she looked at them and responded very very beautifully firstly look at how honest they were they were good people if it was someone else they would have just flicked the two of them off in in that they would have killed them and, and took taken the water because there's only two in the desert or they would have come and enslaved them and captured them and taken the water but no they asked the female they asked her look can we come and stay here because they understood it's a miracle. So from that she realized these people have good character. They are disciplined people. They are cultured. So she said, look, you can come and stay here on condition that this water belongs to us, not to you. We'll allow you to drink from it, but it's our property, not yours. So you can drink and benefit. But subhanallah, it is not yours. To this day, Zamzam is not sold. To this day, it belongs to us all. We can drink from it because that Zamzam is for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We drink from it, mashallah. Normally when they charge you, they are charging you for the, the can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the cans that are well priced because sometimes that can is ridiculously priced. <laughs> so they, they stayed there, they were very happy and they loved the little child. They loved the child. And as the child grew, they taught him Arabic. They were pure Arabs. They taught him Arabic. They taught him manners and so on. And as he grew up, his father used to come and go. His father, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he came back at one stage, he'd seen, mashallah, this is the setup. And he was quite happy with it. And he used to come and he used to go. And thereafter, one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something that happened. As Ibrahim alayhi salam came into Mecca, and he was lying down, he had a dream. And he related the dream to his son the following day. He took his son aside and he tells his son, Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in the Quran. 
فلما بلغ معه السعي قال يا بني إني أرى في المنام أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى When his son was old enough and he used to walk with him and he used to travel with him and come back with him and so on, he told his son, he says, Oh my son, I have been instructed in a dream by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sacrifice you. So what do you think I should do? قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجِدُنِي إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ He says, Oh my son, oh my father, do as Allah has commanded you. Do as Allah has commanded you. You will find me from amongst those who are patient. Don't worry. Now that dua of his, he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, make my children from amongst those who submit to you just like I have and I do. Look at the child. Immediately he surrendered. It did not take him a split second to think. He says, oh my father, do as you've been instructed. You will find me from amongst the patient. Allahu Akbar. فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ Allah says the two of them surrendered to the instruction. Just to mention very briefly as to what happened, He took Ismail alayhi salam and they were going. And He had taken His knife and He had sharpened it very well with the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I told you, He surrendered to that which did not make sense to Him. But He knew that it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never asked Allah, why did you say this? When he was told to do this, he did that. When he was told to leave his family, he left them. When he was told to sacrifice, he was ready. And the son was also ready. And the child decided to go. One narration says that, he says, don't tell my mother yet. Leave her alone. Let us continue, sort this matter out, and then we see. And they went in, and it is reported that shaitan, came to Ibrahim alayhi salam on three occasions, trying to divert him, to make him think, trying to shake his heart, to say, this is the pure, perfect heart. But what do you think you're doing here? This was the ultimate test. No Nabi, no human being has ever been tested with a similar test by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sacrifice the one and only child that they had 86 years later. Nobody. But he knew when it comes to the instruction of Allah, my child comes second, Allah comes first. My beloved brothers and sisters, I want to pause there for a moment. In our lives, we have our children. We are happy. Firstly, for those who don't have children, we make dua. Ibrahim alayhi salam says, never lose hope in the mercy of the most merciful. Those who lose hope in his mercy, they are astray. They are astray. They don't know him. They don't understand his plan. Sometimes Allah is saving you from something great by not giving you something you think is good for you. He knows it's not good for you. And sometimes he wants you to remain in the condition of dua. So he doesn't give you something. So you continue making dua. So in this case, we need to learn a lesson. Number two, those of us who do have children, whenever we use the word love with our children, we should remember. Love does not mean give them whatever they want, even in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, when it comes to the instruction of Allah, that comes first. We will make sure we discipline our children according to what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will make sure we communicate with them correctly. We will make sure that our children are brought up in a manner that between us and Allah, they are not allowed to come in the middle. No, it's Allah first, then everyone else. And it's not difficult to do that. We only need discipline and we need the ability to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for your information, Allah did not instruct us to sacrifice our children. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us to bring them up in a correct manner. Then, when they went, he pelted shaitan. This is why now we have to go for this pilgrimage for the hajj every year. Or should I say every year there is a hajj we go once in a lifetime. But we reenact this in that we are pelting or we are throwing pebbles in similar places 
as did Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. The difference is the devil is not there, but we are removing the devil from within. With every pebble goes one major bad quality of ours. So if we have pelted 47 or 49 pebbles by the end of three days, we should have removed 49 little devils from us. Bad habits which have displeased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave them there in Mina. So when we come back, we come back clean, pure. This is what we are meant to be achieving. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he defied this shaitan and he continued raghman li shaitan against whatever shaitan wanted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when he had put his child down and he decided to put the child on the side in such a way that he wouldn't meet the eyes of his child and he wouldn't be messed with the blood of the child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of how he replaced the child with a ram from Jannah. Allah says, Firstly, Allah says, وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَيَّا قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤِيَا Allahu Akbar We replaced him with a ram from paradise and Ibrahim alayhi salam slaughtered, sacrificed that ram from paradise and he looked and he'd seen this is a ram and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called out O oh Ibrahim you are indeed truthful to us. We have tested you and you have passed the test. Now you can ask what you want. It's all yours. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This was the ultimate test. And the, the, the passing of the test was not only for the father, but even for the child. Now there are people of the previous scriptures who say that the sacrifice was Ishaq or Isaac and it was not Ismail. Ishaq was not even born at the time. He was not yet there at the time. And this happened in Makkah al Mukarramah. So there is no point to dispute that. Historically, it is proven through history that Ishaq alayhi salatu was salam was not there. Because after that, Allah says in the Quran, once Allah called out to him and told him that we have replaced this with a sacrificial ram from Jannah, then Allah says, and we gave him good news of another child known as Ishaq who will come to him. So this was another child. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this beautiful story in the Quran. And we've heard it. Allah says, Indeed, this is a very, very clear manifest test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a clear test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have granted him good news of another child. And Allah says, Inna kathalika najzil muhsineen. This is how we recompense those who do good. So anyone who does good, they bear patience. They surrender to the command of Allah. At some point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open their doors in a way that they would never ever have understood. Now Ismail alayhi salatu was salam was growing in Makkah al Mukarramah in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the two of them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how they built al Kaaba. They built al Kaaba. Allah says وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلِ And remember the time when Ismail and Ibrahim alayhi salam built the Kaaba, they lifted its walls and they brought it up in an amazing way they were making a dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they were doing this what was the dua rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim oh allah accept this from us oh allah we are putting up a house for you because Ibrahim alayhi salam saw his son one day sharpening his arrows one as he was sitting and he says oh my son come here Allah has instructed me to build a house. He says, Dad, I'm with you. Oh, my father, I'm with you. Let's go. We build it. Imagine, look at it. No questions asked. Today, when we tell our children, come, we want something. They say, ah, see. You know, you say, oh, my son, get me this. He says, ah, Dad, get it yourself. <laughs> Didn't Allah give you hands also? 
It's a typical answer of the children of today. Most probably is because when our parents asked us, we also might have passed a few derogatory or negative comments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all offspring who will be the coolness of our eyes. So we have something to learn from this. So as they began to build it, it got a little bit high. When it was a little bit high, what happened? Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was getting the bricks or the rocks from Ismail alayhi salam. There was no mortar used, no cement. It was just rock on rock on rock on rock. Each one was fitting into the other like a jigsaw. Similar to what we spoke about when Nuh built the ark. Noah, may peace be upon him. So what happened? As they're putting it up, now it's getting a bit high. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala miraculously caused a specific rock that he was standing on to go slightly higher. And he placed it. Then it would come slightly lower. He would get the, the, uh, the next one. Then it would go slightly higher. He would place it. Then it would come low. They knew that this is Allah. It is the house of Allah. He has shown us one too many times that definitely he's with us. That is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the house was built, there was a corner. Ibrahim alayhi salam thought to himself, I want to put a proper rock in this corner that fits flush in the corner. And he was trying to look for a, a rock and asking Ismail alayhi salam, let's put this rock. And Ismail alayhi salam is looking for something, but he couldn't find it. And later on, Ismail alayhi salam came back and he'd seen a beautiful rock there. He says, what's this? He says, Allah sent me a rock from Jannah, from paradise. This rock has come. And this is what we call today Al-Hajar Al-Aswad. It is reported in one narration, one narration that that rock at the beginning was of a different color. It, is, it, it was white. But because of the sins of people, as it sucks it out, so to speak, it changed color and became black. However, we know it as Al-Hajar Al-Aswad. We know it as the black stone. From the beginning, we know it as the black stone. And it was placed there. So that was another miracle. Now, do you want to hear the third miracle? When they were completed, they were making a dua. Rabbana waja'alna muslimaini lak. Oh Allah, make both of us surrenderers to you. That is what they were interested in. Oh Allah, make both of us surrenderers to your command at all times. And not only should it stop there. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكْ And oh Allah, from our progeny also, make them those who surrender to you. So he is making dua for himself, for his son, and for his generations to come. My beloved brothers and sisters, when we make dua, sometimes we are so selfish in it, we make dua for ourselves. Ya Allah, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, I want, I want, I want. We forget our children, we forget our offspring, and we forget those who are going to be from our lineage, if Allah wills, up to the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them, our children and our lineage who will be there at the time when Isa alayhi salam, Jesus may peace be upon him, returns onto this earth. May they be from amongst those who are with him and not from amongst those who are against him. That is how far we should be going. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similarly. Another thing, we make dua that Ya Allah grant my child steadfastness, but we are not steadfast. There was a difference here. Ibrahim alayhi salam was steadfast. He was obeying Allah's command and instruction. And then he says, Oh Allah, we have surrendered to you. Make us still further surrenderers to your command. And from our children, make them all those who can surrender to your command. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him this wish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him all the messengers who came after him were from his family. They were all from his family. Allah says, وَإِذِ ابْتَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُمْ Allah says, and remember when Allah tested Ibrahim with so many tests, with words, so many different tests Allah tested him with. So he completed and passed all of them. Allah says, قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا Allah says, Oh, Ibrahim, we are making you a leader for mankind. We are making you a leader for mankind. This evening we heard powerful verses. Powerful verses. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
We want you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to follow the footsteps of your forefather Ibrahim when it comes to the clarity of worship and to abstention from polytheism. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So, as he's making this dua, Allah is granting him. And he's making more dua, and Allah is granting him. And suddenly, the rock he was standing on, it softened for a moment, just for a moment. And his footprint was left on the rock. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about that footprint in the Quran. Allah says, anybody who goes to Mecca, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى where the footsteps of Ibrahim are, literally the physical footsteps, you need to fulfill salah for the sake of Allah at that point. Somewhere close there. So to this day, mashallah, what have they done? In order to preserve it, they've covered it up so it is protected from erosion and so on. And they have placed a metal uh, covering on it. And it is known as Maqam Ibrahim, the footsteps of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. If you look into the glass box, you will notice two feet. And that is the imprint of the feet of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. To this day, it is there. It was right with the Kaaba. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu moved it slightly further back. And it's sitting at that position up to today. Although once when the floods had come, it went quite a distance and then the people brought it back. But it is there to this particular day. So these are miracles. These are signs of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. The non-Muslims see us going for hajj and the pilgrimage. They don't know what we are doing. We are re-enacting what Ibrahim alayhi salam did and what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam followed because he was instructed to do the same. So not only are there physical footsteps of Ibrahim, but even the spiritual footsteps we are meant to be very, very close by. That is also the essence of Maqam Ibrahim, the footsteps. Literally, as well as spiritually. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whenever we go to Mecca to Mukarramah, we fulfill the Umrah, we should be understanding and thinking of what the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam was, Hajar alayhi salatu was salam, Ismail alayhi salam, and all these anbiya, the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who came after the sacrifice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well, who was the final messenger. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the second time Allah is making mention of Maqam Ibrahim. Allah says, Indeed, the first house to be built for the sake of Allah is that one in Bakka. Bakka meaning in Mecca which we have blessed its surroundings and there are blessed surroundings and clear cut signs around there there is the well of zamzam there is mina there is the pelting of the jamara where the shaitan was and so on and at the same time there is the footprint fihi ayatun bayinat clear cut signs the house is there itself maqamu ibrahim the, that footstep of Ibrahim alayhi salam the prophet abraham may peace be upon him is definitely indeed there for your information Again, historically, there is no dispute within the historians of that particular region as to where these things came about from. No dispute. Now, when there is no dispute from those who dwell there, then that means it is solid and it is authentic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. This is why when Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was tested by Allah, look what Allah says. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Whenever Allah told him, O oh Ibrahim, surrender, he said, I surrender to the Lord of the worlds. Whenever Allah told him to surrender, he surrendered without batting an eyelid, as we would say. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter, وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَمْ who can turn away from the Abrahamic religion besides the one who is himself so foolish? Only a fool can turn away from the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. That is what Allah says. 
Allah says, we chose him in the dunya. And even in the akhirah, we have written his name from amongst the pious. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gift that we have. Then we have a very interesting story where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of when Ibrahim alayhi salam went back to his wife Sarah, the other wife that he had had. And he was a very, very, very generous person, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So there came a time when some visitors visited him. And he didn't know them. Three people came in, good looking people. When they came in, he asked his wife, do you know them? No, we don't. Okay. He looks at them and he wanted to serve them something. So he went back into the house and he asked his wife, is there anything to eat? She says, well, we've got a little bit of meat here. He says, no, let's slaughter a calf, a nice fat calf we find at the back there. A, a whole cow, meaning a, a baby cow is known as a calf. So he says, let's slaughter the calf. He slaughtered it and he ordered his servants to cook it and on the spit properly. And they brought the whole calf for how many people? Three people. There were just three of them. Look at how hospitable he was. He wanted to give these people food. So he brought this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَى قَالُوا سَلَامًا قَالَ سَلَامٌ فَمَا لَبِثَ أَن جَاءَ بِعِجْلٍ حَنِيرٍ When these people came, he greeted them with salam. They responded with the salam. In a short while, he came with a whole calf. He put it forward. فَلَمَّا رَآ أَيْدِيَهُمْ لَا تَصِلُ إِلَيْهِ نَكِرَهُمْ وَأَوْجَسَ مِنْهُمْ خِيفَةٌ قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ When he saw these people are not eating. I came with a calf. It's cooked so well. It's a top meal. MashaAllah. I want to honor my guests. I don't even know them. And here they are. They're not eating. So he started eating a little bit in order to try and encourage them. But he'd seen these people are not eating and he began to tremble in a bit of fear. Not to say that I'm scared you know, of these people doing something to me. But what's wrong with these people? Are, they, are these actually people? He sensed something amiss. Something was wrong. So immediately he told him, hey, you know what? I'm starting to get a doubt. What, who are you here? You know, what's happening here? I've got this feeling within me. So they said, لا تخف إنا أرسلنا إلى قوم لوط Don't fear Ibrahim. We are not human beings. We are angels. Don't fear Ibrahim. We are not human beings. We are angels. Allah sent us with two missions to come to you to give you some news and to go and destroy the people of Lut. Now remember a few yesterday we made mention of Lut alayhi salam. He's the nephew of Ibrahim. And Ibrahim alayhi salam told him to stay in a certain place known as Sadum, Sodom. And he was doing his da'wah there. We will get to that inshallah as soon as we complete this story. But they said we have come to destroy the people of Lut. So his wife heard. When she heard, she started laughing. وَامْرَأَتُهُ قَائِمَةٌ فَضَحِكَتْ His wife was standing. She heard the news and she laughed a little bit. Laughed in the sense that finally something is being done about the people of Lut. They were engaged in their own sin. May Allah protect us and our offspring. So Allah says when she laughed, they gave her news. They told her, Allah says, فَبَشَّرْنَاهَا بِإِسْحَاقَ وَمِن وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبِ We gave her good news that you are expecting a child. Remember she could not conceive. And now they were given news. So Allah sent three angels and they went to Ibrahim alayhi salam and after that they were on their way to Lut. So they gave the information, the news to, to Sarah and to Ibrahim alayhi salam that look, she is now expecting and she is bearing a child who will be called Ishaq and after that he will also have more offspring. So that is a dua. Allah sent angels to personally tell Ibrahim alayhi salam that you made dua for offspring. Here they are as pure as can be. Subhanallah. Then Ibrahim alayhi salam, once his fear was gone, he was more worried about Lut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Once the good news came to him, 
فلما ذهب عن إبراهيم الروع وجاءته البشرى يجادلنا في قوم لوط إن إبراهيم لحليم أواه منيب We gave him good news when he, his fear was gone. He started debating with us about Lut and the people of Lut. Like he is saying, look, maybe they will still turn. Because remember, up to that point, he had not asked for anyone to be punished, Ibrahim alayhi salam. He hadn't ever asked for anyone to be punished as such or for a nation to be destroyed. He continued making dua for them. And that was also one of his characteristics. He continued praying for them. So he was debating. He was saying, look, but you are going to loot. Why don't you give them a bit of time? And you know what? There's a man in there. If you are going to destroy all of them, loot is from amongst them. Don't you know that? So they said, look. Ya Ibrahim, a'rid an hadha. Innahu qad jaa'a amru rabbik. Wa innahum atihim a'thabun ghayru mardood. O Ibrahim, let's not talk about that. You just... Turn away from that discussion because it is the instruction of Allah that they will be destroyed and that punishment will come and it is not going to be reversed. Done. So he was reassured that Lut would be saved and he was reassured that the people who had believed would be saved and we will come inshallah to who exactly they were and then he had bidded farewell to these particular angels and they left in their own way. From this we learn that Ishaq alayhi salatu was salam was born after the issue of the sacrifice and the incident of the sacrifice and he was born as a gift to, uh, to Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah we will get to the lives of the other prophets who are from the family of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam as the days go by until then wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanaka allahumma bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka